Okay. It's seven, yeah, seven o'clock. Okay, okay, that's the sharp. sharp. <laughs> Okay, so welcome everybody. This is one of the webinar, part of the webinar series Restart, which is organized by Utopian. And um, today we're going to talk about the EU economic responses to the COVID-19 crisis, and we're particularly focusing on the newly adopted recovery fund and also the role of the European Parliament. And we're going to do so with um, the member of the European Parliament, Brando Benifei, who is a bit late because of um, other commitments that are being, um, they are being like, uh, lasting a bit longer. Um, so in the meantime, we thought um, it might be interesting for the people that doesn't, that doesn't know the association yet to, to know something more about it. And for this reason, um, Roberto Reale, who is the president of Utopian, uh, will give us a short overview of um, what are the goals and what are we doing with the uh, Utopian. So the floor is yours, Roberto. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you, Luisa. I'm Roberto Reale. I'm the president and co-founder of Utopian. But uh, I think that before going to details about Utopian, I will ask Luisa to present yourself because it's important that people uh, get to know us, and you in particular, as you are the host of this event. So a very brief presentation, and I will go into details about the association. Okay, fine. Um, yeah, for um, for the for the audience, I'm Luisa Scarcella, as I was already mentioned, and um, I'm a PhD student in tax law, waiting to defend my PhD dissertation. And I focus on digital taxation and all other different topics related to um, to the digital economy and um, tax law, basically. And um, I'm now located in, in Italy, working remotely. And um, yeah, I think this is all for on, on my side. Yes, yes. Thank you. So tonight we have an expert of taxation. So we will split hairs with Brandon. I mean, we <laughs> we want we want to go into details with uh, with what the, is happening both in Brussels and uh, throughout the the, the EU. Uh, about the association, we were born in um, on the first of November, uh, twenty nineteen. Uh, what which is our goal? Uh, the goal, the main focus is uh, digital innovation, uh, digital transformation in a democratic uh, context. So in the EU, because we are, uh, we are based in Rome, we are opening, we are in the process of opening a, a secondary, secondary uh, office in Brussels, in Brussels right now, also in order to do that. And uh, we want to work uh, to shape the EU space for innovation for digital transformation. Uh, I think that starting next year, but um, but we, we, we don't we don't necessarily need to wait next year. But even even now, even right now, uh, uh, so a new a new uh, wave of opportunities, of huge opportunities, opening uh, because the, uh, there are financial resources there are also uh, innovation um, a lot of innovation going on also from a legal standpoint i mean new frameworks uh, new regulations and so on which are uh, which are working all in the, the same direction I mean, uh, fostering fostering digital transformation fostering innovation in order to uh, reinforce in order to get to build a stronger europe so this is our this is the goal of the European Commission of the European Parliament. This is also our this is also our goal. We want to uh, we want to be here. We want to help uh, the, the, the the European institutions, and also the member states. Uh, Italy uh, as a special case because we are uh, at the moment based mainly based in in Rome to to achieve this goal. So and we are open, of course. To help or contribution from everybody. So, uh, if somebody uh, from our uh, from from you tonight are uh, interested, just drop a line to the, the, the web to, to the to the website or the email address which I am writing in the chat right now. 
info at utopian.eu I repeat it info at utopian.eu you can you can ask us whatever you like and also join us uh, it will be it will be important to to, to grow uh, so uh, about what are we doing right now well the webinar tonight is just one um, it's, it's just uh, uh, one example of what we are doing uh, uh, the webinar is part of restart which is an initiative we get started in the um, uh, in late april right after uh, well right after is not correct i mean in the in the middle of the pandemic wave in italy because we wanted to to give our contribution um, to help um, to help uh, um, citizens, uh, businesses, and uh, the public sector discuss together uh, solutions in order to cope with the economic crisis. And so, from mid from mid April, from late from late April uh, to um, to this moment, we have been uh, we have been delivering one webinar per week. And we will do so. Uh, after August uh, for uh, for the next for the next month, so we will have um, we will have uh, uh, experts, uh, policymakers, journalists, uh, professors. I mean, uh, all sorts of people whom uh, we believe can tell us a story, and we will discuss with them exactly what we are doing tonight, we'll discuss with them uh, possible the problems, challenges, and solutions. Uh, about, uh, this, is, this is our restart project. Then apart from, from that, we are focusing a lot on uh, European uh, planning. Uh, we are, we, we are uh, submitting proposals uh, to, to um, um, some, um, this financing financing um, programs of the European Commissions. We did that in uh, in June, for example. Uh, we submitted a, a proposal for uh, public contracts for, uh, for a specific uh, funding call uh, within the uh, Connecting Europe Facility Program, but we will continue to submit proposals in the next months, uh, both on our own and with uh, other stakeholders. Uh, as you all may be aware of, uh, it, the, the, the probabilities of success when submitting proposals for EU uh, funding uh, are much higher if we work uh, on a cross-border uh, scenario. So uh, the, one important and also exciting part of our, our job is to uh, have, uh, is to involve stakeholders from, uh, not, not only from Italy, of course, but from all member states and from mm -hmm. a very diverse uh, set of, um, uh, 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 for example, we, uh, we worked. We, we, we worked with a, a technological uh, firm for the proposal we submitted in June. But we are working now for the next uh, submissions with technological partners, with public sector bodies, uh, with universities. So we are in the we are in the process of expanding our network. I think that um, working in the, um, this. I call it industry. It's not a real industry. It's just, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, or we call it. We could call it an industry uh, in a very special, mean, very special sense. But uh, winning European uh, funded projects is is very competitive. Uh, so we can do that only if we. Uh, only, only if we are able to build a, a network, a distributed, a distributed network of uh, subjects, of parties, of stakeholders who can uh, support us and work with us. So this is this is a very challenging thing to do, but it's it's also it's also a rewarding thing because the ultimate goal of of 
funding projects of the funding programs is um, i think um, creating stronger bonds between uh, between the uh, between italy for example in our case and other member states but among member states in uh, in general so this is a, a challenge we are uh, trying to uh, to, 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 to put our best energies on. Um, so, of course, if this is something you can, you think will be interesting for you, please join us. Uh, you will find a very diverse and exciting uh, place. So, so, we are waiting for uh, Brando. I think uh, it should be coming. I mean, do you have um, any updates, Lisa? No, I don't have a, an update, but um, I mean, these are very busy days in Brussels because of the yeah. of the newly adopted recovery fund. So I can imagine the, the meetings can, can last a bit longer. So uh, I, I will, of course, um, keep you updated as, as soon as we have um, some news. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions actually regarding what um, Roberto just, just said or, or told you, um, maybe we can, you can ask, through the chat or or even through the q a um and that reminds me that i should give some organizational um instructions for the for this session while we, we are waiting for our speaker and so the the session will be organized in two in two sessions the first part is going to have a presentation by the speaker and then we will open the floor to the q a and I would like to invite you so that questions don't get um, lost to use the Q&A option. You can find it at the bottom next to chat. And if you have comments or you would like maybe to share some views, um, then you can, or like with other participants, then you can use the, um, the chat and you can write your, your comments there. And if you want to directly ask the questions without writing it down, you um, can let us know um, through the chat and then we will open your mic and we will let you intervene. Um, so these are different modalities. And uh, yes, Brando should be here. I think I, I see him in the attendees list. So I have to promote him to panelists. Okay, just one moment, Brando, and we will make you panelists. Here we go. I should be here. Okay. Okay, we can see you and we should also be able to, to hear you. Good evening, Hi, Brando. How are you? Hey, hi. Thanks to be here. I'm... Yeah, thank you very much. I know it's very like busy days for you right now. So thank you very much for, <laughs> yeah. for making it. So I will leave We are, uh, to we are completing our work um, with the parliament to prepare for um, we will discuss about that for tough negotiations in autumn for the budget um, and we have a, I'm, I'm back in Italy after four four months in Brussels um, but uh, we are still working uh, with uh, 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 distance meetings uh, especially uh, to prepare the, the, as I said, the negotiations for the budget, because probably we will talk about that. We, there was a lot of hype, rightly so, I think, for the recovery fund, but that's not the only thing that Europe is dealing with in this period. We also have uh, the uh, traditional budget that is uh, also very important, on which the parliament is uh, more directly involved in terms of power to decide. So I, I will leave the, the, the floor to both of you. Thank you. Thank you, Roberto. So I will stay just... here, of course, behind uh, the scenes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, we we like in the meantime we had a short presentation of the um, of the topic and of the of the association. And uh, first of all, we would like to thank you once again for being here. And um, yeah, we really hope to to get a bit inside of the debate and the discussion for the um, for the negotiations. And uh, so it's, it's really exciting to have um, someone from the inside to, to talk about this topic today. And um, yeah, so before getting started, uh, I think um, just a few words. Uh, Brando is a um, member of the European Parliament. Um, it was already in the, before um, the, in the previous legislation. 
and um and yeah we we thought um it was a great speaker to to talk about this um this topic as of course during this crisis um the, the economic measures um to be adopted play a big role um not only in the political debate but also like in, in academia and also for businesses and citizens um so i think this is a very good opportunity to to get connected different um stakeholders um and, and talk about this very important topic so I will not um, steal any, any more time and I will give the floor um, to Rando for his presentation. Thank you very much once again for being here today. Thank you very much for this uh, invitation. Uh, I think that we are in a very um, important moment to discuss uh, these things together. It's been, we can say now, the, um, the moment uh, of uh, uh finally uh, some important decisions uh, in the middle of 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 july uh, you know that uh, um, the uh, european council has taken uh, a very important step towards building uh, the conditions for um, a steady and uh, um, uh, strong um, i would say recovery all over the continent by choosing to put together um, the sharing the risk of a recession that is looming all over Europe, not only on the more uh, uh, hardly hit, strongly hit countries uh, like Spain, uh, Italy, France, uh, even though you know that in these days we can say that Italy is in a better position, it's containing very well the uh, spreading of the virus, while we see in Belgium, in France, in Spain, now some uh, renewal of the infection. But uh, we knew that uh, it's going to be like that, uh, that we have uh, some uh, returns and we will have to be always very careful. Um, but uh, um, the recession, as I said, is, is a looming fact and not over only the more um, hardly hit uh, countries, but for the, the whole of Europe, the, the prospects that the IMF, the Commission has released, uh, slightly different, but they all say that all the European Union will be under severe dif economic difficulty, not just now in this very early moment after the spike of the pandemic, but also in the next months. And uh, next year we can expect some some bounce, some, some bounce, and we hope it will be the biggest possible. But to support this uh, recovery, the, uh, the member states finally decided to give uh, the green light to um, these uh, stronger, as I was uh, saying, sharing of the risk. I would not say sharing of the debt. This is important to understand, I think, what was agreed is uh, to share the risk of future debt, in the sense that without these uh, measures, probably many countries, or pro probably all, but with different costs for each of them, because creating national debt has different costs, for example, in, in Germany or in Italy, as we know, it's the so-called uh, spread you know, between uh, the German Bund and the other um, titles. Um, so we, we, we have seen with the next generation EU, with this uh, recovery fund, uh, a sharing of the risk of future debt. It's in fact uh, some debt sharing in a very peculiar way, but it's undoubtedly a great step forward. And I want to say that some political leaders, including, this is obviously my political opinion, the Italian government that were a bit uh, we can say criticize by saying we don't want just, we will talk about that, not just uh, um, um, uh, loans uh, with favorable conditions. We want to have a sort of extra budget that is uh, a sort of extra EU budget that is devoted to the recovery. Uh, how can we finance that? Obviously, it couldn't be financed by asking the member states to give more money directly. We, we have seen how excruciating has been to negotiate before the pandemic to increase the standard European budget by 0 0.01. Uh, 
um, in the negotiations with the member states. So it, would, it was uh, unthinkable to raise 750 um, billion euros, like it's the size now of the recovery fund, through national contributions. This would have been a, an impossible task to find agreement or something like that. So what was agreed on, however, is a form of debt sharing. As I said, it's a future debt sharing. The, the, we, we share the, the risk of, of avoiding making new debt in the future. Uh, and this is what will happen because the European Commission will be substituting the national authorities in creating a, a shared debt instead of a sum of national debts through uh, European titles uh, that will be bought by private and public investors to finance this amount of money, 750 billion, that will be distributed partially with uh, um, uh, super favorable loans long term and partially with subsidies so with no need to to give back obviously uh, there is an issue that the parliament is very keen in discussing regarding the recovery fund that is how can we avoid that anyways one part of this common debt will be needed to be repaid by, by the member states anyway what am I referring to? With the fact that if you create common titles, if you create a kind of European debt, hmm, guaranteed by the, by the regular EU seven-year budget, of which I will talk as a second part of my intervention. But um, um, if you uh, create this common debt, at some point, these titles that you sell to investors will need to be repaired. The titles, the capital invested, and some little interest. There will be a little interest. How can we re repay that? Uh, if there is no other solution, in seven years, we will start seeing each member state having to repay for many years this uh, recovery fund. This is the closing clause. I mean, if there is no other way, the member states will repay it with the national budget, starting in seven years' time. Um, and to be honest, Italy, even in this worst-case scenario, I talk about my own country that was, for sure, the biggest winner in terms of resources available coming from the recovery fund will be in Italy, Two, uh, more than 200 billion euros out of, out of the 750. Um, even with this worst case scenario that you need to repay with the national budget, Italy would have at least 25 billion euros extra being given uh, in subsidies. So for my country, for example, it would be a, a gain anyway, in terms of resources put in place for the recovery. But it's not in the European interest to keep the situation like this. And it's not especially in the next generation's interests to keep it like this. So that in some time, the member states will need to repay. Um, because think of it, seven, eight years ago, many young people starting to work, uh, finishing their studies, when we had the previous crisis, economic crisis, they had to face a lot of economic difficulty. Them, their families, maybe they lost opportunities, they lost jobs, they had problems with their career, with completing their studies. Then now we have a new crisis that we are trying to mitigate with these measures. Very ambitious, much more ambitious than seven years ago, eight years ago, nine years ago, in the previous crisis time. Um, much more ambitious. We never had this kind of uh, risk of debt sharing that uh, we are putting in place now. But uh, think of it, these same people who realistically will not be dead, most of them, and will not be retired, in seven years time, they would have their national budgets of their countries again repaying. It's not fair. It's not fair in my opinion. 
So that's why the European Parliament is pushing a lot for own resources. That's the missing link in what has been achieved in, this, uh, in July. Uh, I mean, initially, the, 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 the European Union, you know about it, you have read about it, I don't need to be so specific, I think. You know what has been put in place. The, the European Central Bank has started uh, buying a lot of uh, um, um, national debt. We have seen the stop of the growth and stability pact, stability and growth pact, sorry. Uh, the release of uh, more possibility of state aid, uh, some structural funds uh, that were unused from the previous budget. Then in a second phase, we also started to have these uh, loan instruments like uh, the SURE that will be active from September to support financially the maintenance in place, which unfortunately will be needed of social uh, support uh, mechanisms uh, to support income and jobs of people at risk of losing jobs and income. Uh, a situation that will last a long time. Think of some sectors like tourism, like culture, um, some uh, pro productive uh, sectors that will be having a long time to recover. And so, uh, very important instrument, this sure uh, uh, um, uh, loan that will support uh, um, member states in maintaining the social uh, support lines, the ESM special line for health. This will be very important again with a, a national uh, loan to, to finance the uh, health systems. The EIB, the European Investment Bank that supports businesses will be having more capital to do uh, support for businesses. So in general, uh, there were already before this agreement on the recovery fund, uh, some important instruments for some hundreds of billions of euros of loans. But the problem was that there was mostly uh, instruments that would make the member states more indebted. And we know that some member states have already a significant debt, obviously Italy, first of all, but also others. And some of them are particularly frail in their economic structure. Think of uh, Greece or Spain that have a, a, a not a strong manufacture. Uh, they are weak in some uh, elements of the real economy that can be very difficult in such a, a situation. But also, to be frank, if these countries were to fall, uh, some other stronger countries in terms of public finance would be in terrible shape because of the shrinking of the capability of the internal European market. Think of Denmark, think of Netherlands. How could they be strong in recovery if they could spend a lot of money, probably more, for sure, more than some Southern European countries by themselves, but they would lose their markets because also they, don't forget that the US market is very weak in this moment for obvious reasons. So if a, such a big part of the GDP of Europe and the population of Europe would suffer very, very bad recession. Also the stronger part in terms of singular capability of, of spending, indebting, um, uh, would suffer a lot. So there was understanding among the elites of Germany. Very important, you know, that Germany has moved from a, a, an original position towards uh, saying, okay, the loans are not sufficient. We need to build a three-year, at least, this is what the recovery fund is for, at least three-year time recovery plan also with subsidies uh, and finance with a public debt, avoiding uh, increasing spiraling of the national debt. So we are here. I said, what was missing? The parliament says that, as I said, the repaying system is missing and some some countries, some governments are already supporting this and the Commission is supporting and we will go down this road of creating own resources for the European Union. What, 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 what's the meaning of this? Very simply, it's new European-wide um, uh, financial means of imposition, of taxation. I give you three examples a European-wide taxation of uh, speculative financial transactions, 
defined by some characteristics. Taxation of uh, uh, some activities of uh, web giants. Um, a taxation of the products sold in the internal market, but produced outside Europe with lower environmental standards. This kind of situation on these environmental issues is already a form of social and environmental dumping towards our continent. So it's also a measure to foster a fairer competition. These three means I mentioned, taxation of financial transactions, taxation of digital giants, and of extra Europeans polluters, is uh, a proposal to make this recovery fund more sustainable. And in the, meantime, in the meantime, in the medium term, also to build a new narrative. If the European Union asks, finally, those who until now, for sure, due to the dynamics of globalization, were not really asked for uh, a lot of support to their communities where they created uh, revenue where they operated. I'm referring to some part of the financial sphere, to the web giants, to the polluters uh, outside Europe selling in Europe. We are asking them uh, to give more with the national states, with the member states that were unable to ask for this until now. So we are moving the fiscal pressure away from citizens and businesses in Europe towards those who were avoiding fiscal pressure. Um, and so we are also reducing in the, in the term, in the medium term, if we increase these uh, own resources, the need for the member states to contribute with the national budgets to the European budget. And we will stop hearing in Netherlands, for example, to give an example, in Netherlands, people saying we are paying for the debt of the South uh, if we have a too big uh, European budget. And we have in Italy people saying Italy is paying more than it gets back uh, and it's giving money away to uh, Eastern Europeans. And this is a, a kind of uh, vicious circle because everyone could find a blame of something that is not perfect for them in the way now the dealing of the budget contributions is done. And this is a, a negative spiraling that has increased the euro skepticism, lack of understanding of how the European money is, uh, is uh, accumulated and spent. So we are in favor of more transparency, more clearness, and more uh, European wide imposition that is managed Euro in a European way. This is a, a crucial battle for the European Parliament. And finally, we have support from the Commission to some extent support from some governments, Italian for sure, French for sure, German, at least for some, for the digital tax for sure. Merkel even said it clearly in the speech in the European Parliament uh, a few weeks ago, and so on. And we will fight for that. So this is my comment on the recovery fund. The other part of what was decided to confront our uh, challenge of the recovery was the budget. The budget is a different story. The budget is a standard mean of financing of the European work. And be careful on one point that, unfortunately, I don't see very much underlined in the media, that the recovery fund that we crucially supported and we now want to complete with the own resources is financing national policies. We'll support national policies proposed by the member states with national recovery plans. Obviously, especially for the ones, the countries that will get more resources, the challenge will be to be able to spend more money, uh, to, to, to be able to spend all this money, to channel it in projects that are really strong for the recovery. This will be very important. But then, in, on the other hand, the, net, the standard European budget is the vehicle for financing the normal, the, 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 the uh, you can say the, the, the traditional European programs, the real European programs, Horizon 2020, that now it becomes Horizon Europe, program for research and innovation, uh, Erasmus, uh, Digital Europe, 
uh, the part of the, uh, of the um, uh, common agricultural policy. These are all European uh, funds. Uh, and in, in, in this uh, pool, there are also, they, we can say, we can consider them hybrid funds that are European, but managed very much at national and regional levels, like the European Social Fund and the European Regional Development Fund. But this is all the budget, the normal budget. In the agreement of July of the Council, to give some uh, satisfaction, we can say, to those who were more doubtful on the recovery fund, we have seen some cuts on the standard budget, the this, this seven-year 2021-2026 uh, uh, European um, uh, budget, to 20, uh, 2027, sorry, uh, European budget, that is uh, the uh, normal budget of the, of, the, of the EU. We have seen cuts in many of these programs, even the ones I, I mentioned, to be proposed. But we put a big challenge on this as parliament. We will not, we will not, um, um, we will not um, uh, come uh, to um, uh, accept, because our consent is mandatory, a European budget that is not up to the challenge of uh, the future policies, the innovation, the investing in youth, in the reskilling, in the lifelong learning. I could make many examples. This budget is not ambitious enough. And we don't want to have this bargain, that to have a stronger recovery fund that will last for these three years where we need to really push for the, for the recovery, we will have a seven-year budget that is too much cut in the European value, in the European added value programs. So be sure that the parliament will now fight to defend, obviously, the very good recovery fund that needs to be completed with their own resources. On the other end, we fight for a stronger European-wide budget and we'll negotiate, and this will be the autumn biggest challenge for the European parliament, which is also looking now into new policies, the Green Deal, you know, it is very important. Now we are working on innovation and, for example, artificial intelligence will be very, a very big focus. I will be part of a special committee on that. And I mean, in general, the parliament will be uh, uh, trying to be on the avant-garde of uh, determining the, the, the best policies for the European citizens. But in general, and I conclude on this, we need to uh, be able to build a long-term vision for Europe. I want to be honest and conclude on this. The member states, the, the, the European um, countries have different public opinions. We don't see the things all in the same way. I give you an example. In Italy, we have a growing Euroscepticism, but we have a quite wide understanding, even among the Euroskeptics, that a, a, a part of it, at least, of the Euroscepticism, that, that the, the European Union should be better by being stronger, more united. There is a kind of a resentment against a too divided European Union. In uh, Sweden, we have parties of all the political sphere that are quite united very divided on, on uh, internal policies among, we can say, uh, between, we can say, a traditional left and right divide. Mm? But uh, all of them a bit uh, uh, timid, a bit uh, prudent on having a stronger integration. Should we frustrate the idea of uh, a majority of Italian public, if you look carefully at the polls and at the data, to have a stronger European Union? And at the same time, should we frustrate the idea of the Swedish public largely, not all, but very largely, transversely among the political forces to be against further integration? I think we need to take stock of this and find a proposal of renewal of the European Union that can fit for the motto that we have as the European Union, united in diversity. 
I myself am a convinced European federalist. I have very strong ideas on this. I want the European Federation, but I also think flexible to build uh, a kind of uh, differentiated integration. We already are doing it. We should not be scared. The euro is already a differentiated integration. Schengen is already there. Cooperation. So in my opinion, and I conclude on this, we moved with this recovery fund, with this battle for the future of Europe uh, to change it also in the scope, uh, in, the, in, the, in the light of the terrible uh, life uh, of the time of the pandemic. But we must not stop. We need to make European Union fit for the, the, the very complicated time we are living in. It's a, also a geopolitical act. The recovery fund is already there. We are saying we, we, we move together. We have se sent a strong message to the world, to the other big uh, poles of the world, to China, to US. But we are unique. In Europe, we have freedom, political, societal, uh, civil, uh, of expression, of uh, meeting, of reunion, together with uh, a strong social model, with public pensions, with public health care, with public uh, uh, education, etc. So uh, I think that we should not stop. We, uh, if we don't want to be caught again in difficulty, we need to build a more resilient, more sovereign Europe. But we must do it knowing that we are different. So we cannot just speak with uh, um, two plain slogans. We need to look carefully on how to build a stronger European Union that is fit for the different aspirations of our people of the European Union. Also because, and I really conclude on this point, also because we are talking about further enlargement of the European Union. I'm totally in favor of enlarging the Union with the Western Balkans. That's part of, the, of, the Euro, of Europe that has been left out until now. And these countries have tried hard to uh, be fit to enter the European Union. And I think they should. But I think that the present difficulty of decision-making of the European Union would be aggravated by enlarging without reforming. So we need to reform and to support also a more uh, inclusive European Union. This is, I think, the, the, the way forward. I will fight for that. And I, I think that uh, anyways, there can be obviously very different views than mine, but I think we should be all united in saying that we need a big debate. The European Union has to start soon a very big confrontation, discussion on its whole future. And to finally, think with the mind of uh, 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 um, strengthening our unique model of freedom and social model, as I, I said earlier, by having a stronger European Union. But uh, this is a big work, it's a big job, and the European Parliament is ready to give its contribution, but we need also member states, we need civil society, we need um, intellectual debate also. So thank you also for giving me this opportunity to now to, to explain what happened in my view, what I've seen from my observation point as, as a leader of one of the uh, Italian parties in the European Parliament. Uh, I'm today in this second mandate, uh, the head of the Italian delegation in the Socialists and Democrats, and so the, the head of the, of the Democratic Party um, there in the European Parliament. I tried to give you my views um, and uh, also my we can say hopes for strong and uh, conclusive uh, debate for the future of the European Union. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Brando, uh, because you gave us like a perfect overview of what is going on. And I think you raised many um, interesting points. Um, it's not a secret between us that I, I share with you some of your visions for, for the future of Europe. Uh, but um, while I invite everyone to join us in the conversation by asking questions either with the Q&A option or with the chat, I, I actually have some questions for you. Because as I said, um, and, and also some comments, I think what has been uh, very in, like emerging from, from these um, late, um, late uh, happenings 
um, is actually the, the institutional role that the parliament can play towards the multi multi-annual um, financial framework. I think it's very important now to have um, to, to, to see um, how institutionally the parliament can play a role in trying to um, like try to put these cuts um, away from, from the budget and and also to put forward a vision a european vision because as you as you perfectly said um there's this difference between the two like the recovery fund and uh, and the budget and and it's very important to keep um to keep uh, pushing for for new for more european um uh, policies and, and planning and uh, and opportunities um this was just a brief comment um my questions are on the resources on their own resources um, because you were mentioning the financial transaction tax, the digital tax, and the, a sort of carbon tax, which is different, as I as far as understood from the from the other. Oh, the carbon border adjustment mechanism. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. Um, now I, I perfectly uh, get it then, which is the which is the proposal. And are these measures put only for the recovery fund, or are you planning also to have a discussion? on own resources for the European Union also in a long-term um, vision. So are there only put as an interim uh, measure for this recovery fund or um, long vision? Because as far as understood from the from the first proposal on the digital tax, that was also like um, a short-term um, short term proposal like it wasn't thought as a as a long-term measure and i think it's also like very good to have this kind of proposal being discussed at European level because um, as a um, like a, um, working in the field of tax, we know we now see many measures have been adopted at national level, but different member states, and of course this might create a lot of issues in terms of um, coordinations, and and so definitely having something at European level um, might be easy, um, the, the the aim and the goal of of this um, type of um, tax measure. Well, I, I, I mean, I, I, I think it's. Um, I mean, there, there are, uh, there is a discussion on having this as a temporary increase of own resources um, that can have a, a partial, a limited uh, solution. But the Parliament thinks that this must be now for the recovery fund. As I said, a, a, a set of own resources. I only made a few examples. There are also other. Uh, proposals. I made. The, I chose. I I, I chose. I chose to to mention the ones I I believe they are the most progressive and the ones that are more important to also politically to explain what we are doing because we are trying to shift, as I said, the a national fiscal um, pressure to a European wide pressure on different subjects. But this is. Um, I mean, a debate where the European Parliament positioned itself already quite uh, clearly in saying that we want also this to become uh, a standard of financing a large part of the European budget. We don't want this to be only now a solution for the recovery fund to make it not being at the risk of being re refunded in time by the member states. So the, the battle will be also, there is, a, a, I can tell you, there is an interview, I think, on Le Soir, a Belgian newspaper today by Sassoli, the president of the European Parliament, that is talking exactly about this point. We are fighting for own resources, not as a temporary uh, mean, but as we are already saying that we, we, we think that also the issuing of this common debt of a special form should become permanent, not just a temporary uh, measure. We also think that their own resources has to become a, a, a permanent mean of financing. Well, they say that crises can also be seen as opportunities. So who knows? Maybe we start with these and then we we proceed with something more more ambitious. I have some questions in the in the chat. So the first one is from Ashish. Um, Brando, thanks for your presentation. Do you foresee the focus on fiscal stimuli, uh, stimulus measures as opposed to industrial level stimulus or stimulus for public service provisioning, especially healthcare? Does the role of the European Parliament play a positive role in keeping the policy space open for member countries, open based on their own situation? 
Well, I think that uh, um, we need, in fact, with this recovery plan uh, to um, address the different, uh, the different issues. Uh, we have some uh, instruments already devoted to some of the uh, fields you mentioned. Because, for example, on industrial level stimulus, for sure, also the EIB, the European Investment Bank, can and will play an important role. And we tried to strengthen its capability now with this uh, recapitalization that was decided, its capability to reach out to smaller and medium-sized enterprises, not to uh, only focus on the bigger ones. So even though it's true that the EIB is, we can say, a kind of booster for those who are already in a good shape. On the other side, we have the sure that will help uh, more in difficulty business to maintain their jobs in place with their workers and so not to lose the productive capacity because of some months of lower um, action. So we have uh, the already the instruments that will be already available in autumn to um, uh, support, uh, uh, we can say, the business side. Um, then on the healthcare, we have the ESM special uh, healthcare uh, credit line that uh, is available for those countries that will want to activate, it's there. Italy, I think, will have to choose to do it. For example, talking about my country in, in autumn, because for Italy, it stays quite costly to um, raise national debt uh, autonomously in very big quantities. So having a 2% GDP loan from the ESM, the European Stability Mechanism, this kind of uh, financial fund was established already in the past that uh, has been uh, um, used to create a, a, a loan capacity only for the healthcare systems. I think this is something that we will need to activate. But as you see, these things I mentioned are very sectorial and are anyway uh, loans that will anyway uh, have an impact on public finance. Lower than the national public debt, but they will have an, a, an impact. So it's very important that we complement with the recovery fund these uh, policies. And yes, the parliament will play a role to, to, we can say, to maintain ambition and space. But I want to underline when we look at the issue of the when you say open to their own situation, I mean the recovery fund, that 750, 750 billion, they will be financing national policy. So there is space for sure for the member states to adapt on what they, they need because they are in different situations. The European budget that will be realistically a bit more than 1,000 billion euros for the seven years is for the European programs. So I think that this flexibility of a policy space open for the member countries based on their own situation that you mentioned in your question will be there thanks to the recovery fund that gives exactly the member states the flexibility on choosing what to do. Um, there is also another question. Should I answer? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> the, um, the question is, I think you didn't read it already. I, I, I can read it. Uh, uh, I love the part about the Balkan. As Utopian, we are uh, submitting to the EACEA program a proposal focused on open data for transparency and anti-corruption together with the Balkan country. Yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah, this was more than a comment than a question, but uh, um, I think we should not uh, at all uh, break, I mean, stop in the uh, advancement of the integration of the Balkans. Um, both with the countries that are members, I mean, Croatia has been in 10 years, um, and others are still not members. Uh, uh, Albania, Serbia, Montenegro, we are working, uh, Northern Macedonia, we are working to have uh, this black hole in our map of the European Union to be filled. But to do it, I think, obviously, these countries still need to do some steps. At the same time, we also need to be ready to have them. Because 
if we still are in this situation of how the European institutions work to get today, with too much power of veto of smaller um, countries uh, co coalition in a way that, uh, I mean, we, we need to maintain a balance. Obviously, we are a union that even if it takes a more federal uh, structure, it will have to balance states and the, the central level, for sure. Uh, we will be, for sure, more uh, decentralized than uh, a traditional federation. This is obvious for the history of our continent. But I think that uh, uh, we really need to reform the way the European Union works today, because to be honest, let be, let's be honest, many citizens don't understand fully how the European Union works because it's too complicated. Uh, instead, I think we should be clearer on having the European Parliament being the lower chamber of legislation of the European uh, uh, Union. The Council, the Council where the member states convene and are the other parts of the legislation, they are, we can say today, a kind of Senate of the European Union, they should become a real legislative chamber. Today they are a kind of diplomatic uh, uh, place that is uh, a bit uh, strange when they have to work with the political uh, and legislative body that is the, the European Parliament, that is their counterpart to decide on legislation. And the European Commission should be stronger as a European government. I think we should go in this way, at least, as I said, also with some flexibility between the different countries so that we will be in better shape, more efficient, quicker, more understandable by citizens and, and in this way more democratic, and in this way, more ready also for a, a, an enlargement with other countries in the Balkans that, as I said, and as the parliament also expressed officially, we fully support the uh, enlargement in the Balkans of the EU. I do have two, um, two questions. Um, somehow they also like connect. Um, one is actually back to the financial transaction tax. I remember that one of the proposals, well, it was one of the proposals after the, the other crisis, the other financial crisis. And um, it was really hard to reach an agreement. Um, and one of the states that was against it was the UK. Uh, so I was now wondering if you think time are different and um, do you think it might be easier to get a um, to get an agreement on that? And um, the other question was: in many states, um, some uh, forms of aid um, were given um, based on the fact that um, the entrepreneurs must have, like the companies, must not have been like located um, to some extent in tax havens, um, referring to the blacklist that adopted at European level. And and so in the public there was a lot of discussion about so-called internal um, tax havens in the European Union. And it's been years now that there is debate on um, the adoption of a consolidated common corporate tax base, the so-called CCTB. And I was wondering if that is also like on the plate um, for the next year um, policies or um, now if the focus has changed more on these other type of, um, of uh, measures. Okay, yeah, I will conclude on this because I will have to go after, but uh, these are very important um, uh, points in the sense that, uh, yes, I see without the UK some more space. Uh, in terms of the, of the, um, we can say, of the internal dynamics, uh, but uh, it, it's not going to be easy anyway. So it's, it's a difficult negotiation, but I think we need to be able to find compromise, to um, agree also on different things together. There must be some package that can make everyone a bit happy. This is how politics work. Um, but I think this is a really important objective uh, to be reached by the European Union. And so we will fight hard for that as we fought for a recovery fund that was not based only on uh, national loans and in the end we we won it so political battles even difficult ones can be won so we 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 will do that i so i'm a little more optimistic yes because the uk will be not there in this sense and it will be easier um on the other hand i was not i was not uh, scared of negotiating also with the uk i mean probably what we experienced with the pandemic 
might have changed some views uh, everywhere. But obviously, in, um, in UK, there are some specific sensitivities re related also to the, to the city of London, etc. But anyway, we will see how it goes. Uh, we will fight for it. Uh, on the CCTV, yes, that's very important. We will fight for that. That's in our program. I want to underline that von der Leyen, much before the pandemic, has committed herself in written to uh, present a proposal on this. Uh, this was part of the package uh, of uh, to support her, to confirm her as president of the commission, negotiated by our political group, especially not only, uh, also other political groups, to push for this for the commission. Because as you know, it's the commission that needs to make a first step. So we are hopeful that von der Leyen will respect uh, its commitment, publicly taken, to address this issue by making some strong proposals um, to uh, achieve uh, this objective that in general is, is uh, totally in line with what we are trying to say, that we want um, a, a fairer and more uh, stable and less fragmented internal market, and also this aspect uh, as an influence. So it, it has to be seen also from a pragmatic uh, point of view, in my, in my opinion, not an ideological battle, because otherwise we risk losing it. It to be more concrete, uh, in, my, in my opinion. Thank you very much. Uh, it was really interesting to have this internal overview of what is happening and what is next. And um, I think I will conclude by wishing you good luck with the future work and with the Thank negotiations. You. I know it's going to be hard work. And, uh, and I hope you will also have some time for, for vacation and relax. Uh, thank you very much once again for all the participants who have attended this meeting and um, I wish you all a nice summer and thank you Brando once again for being here today. Thank you. Bye-bye.